So, now the J A the term J A and we have discussed this is defined by fixed law which is called as J A. We we'll call it as dz for the time being. Okay. So, in this case, what we are defined is this is called as a fixed law, this is first law of diffusion. This is very well studied, this, but it has the same form as what we had discussed last class as potential difference versus uh, resistance. So, in this, this is a system that we are talking about. The, uh, this is z, this is z is in this direction. So, there is a movement that is happening of chemical that is going somewhere. Okay. Now, the, the, this, the signage is like this, you see this, uh, this negative sign does not, the negative sign is a indicator of the direction of the flux. So, this is uh, somewhat uh, this is depends on how you are defining the frame of reference of this thing. Okay. So, a lot of times when we do this, so if you are assuming uh, we are defining z in some direction. So, if you are saying z equals to 0 and it is increasing say z equals to L. If I take this point as z and this point as z plus delta z. Yeah. But if I am looking at flux in this direction, there is a concentration of Two at z, and there is a concentration of two at z. This is z plus delta z and z. So the definition of this is uh, rho a z plus delta z minus rho a z divided by delta z as uh, delta z goes to 0 is given is, is the definition of rho a by dz. But if you have defining z in the direction of this n a in this direction, flux in this direction, this number is smaller than this number, which means that this quantity is negative. Yeah, you are going from a higher potential to lower potential. So, rho a z is greater than rho a z plus delta z. So, but the derivative is defined like this, which means this quantity is negative. But we are saying the flux is, we are want to define flux as a positive quantity in the direction of the gradient. We have to put a negative sign here, Na equals, is or Na is proportional to negative of, but where Na is positive. Okay. So, d rho a by dz is defined in the direction of re reducing concentration in the increasing z that is the definition that is why this negative sign has to come there. So, whenever we are looking at flux typically our uh, this thing is uh, the definition is based on this. Okay. So, d a as we discussed d a i is the diffusion coefficient is a uh, is a proportionality constant for most part the, the, the preliminary things, but now people have figured out what is d a diffusion coefficient what is it a function of. So, we are last class when we uh, when we discussed we looked at d a 1 is greater than d a 2 which means that diffusion of a in air is greater than diffusion of air in water because there is less resistance in air the diffusion is seen as a drag. Diffusion is seen as a resistance or a drag, it is a function of that. Okay. Less resistance, more diffusion. 
the less resistance happens in the presence of a lighter medium. It is also a function of, so we are saying that uh, dA <coughs> i is a function of the density of the medium rho i. <coughs> so there are other factors in this, it could also be a function of temperature because when temperature increases or decreases the, the motion, the mean motion uh, velocity of the molecules all are all higher, the energy is higher. So therefore it can influence how it moves and it can overcome, it has more energy therefore it can overcome uh, more resistance, that one. Third part is, a, um, is related to the size of the molecule. So what we are looking at is molecular weight. So in general the, the rule of thumb and also measurements show that the molecular weight, so the larger, if there is a larger molecule versus a uh, smaller molecule versus larger molecule, the molecule is huge. If it has to encounter, if it has to maneuver, go through a certain medium, the chances of this, this encounters less resistance than this one. This one encounters larger resistance than this one. This is a general observation. So therefore, we are, we expect to see that with density, increase in density, we see this may go down. With increase in molecular weight or the size, also diffusion will go down. So there are intuitive things. There is no. Um, then you also have viscosity, viscosity of the medium. Viscosity of course is a function of temperature and uh, properties and all that. So you can actually reduce viscosity to other properties if you can. That That is, uh, viscosity is a flow property. So we are not really, we do not really care. So we say we will define diffusion for static fluids. Now viscosity is there, but uh, density is what we are more worried about, so predominantly that, okay. But in correlations that we, we see, viscosity appears in the correlations, uh, it is also a function of uh, property of the fluid, okay. So a lot of DAI is measured, people measure, so we have uh, DA1, DA2, these are all measured, people are measured, so in the case for environmental purposes, DA, we measure it through air and we measure it through water. These are the two fluids that we are interested in. We are not worried about other things. So these are measured and there are also correlations in order to predict the air. There is also a re, uh, uh, this thing what we can do is if you know the, DA, the molecular DA of one molecule, for example, if I know DA1 is known. DB1 is unknown, DB is an, another chemical. I can calculate D, DB1, DB1 by DA1 by using any of these parameters as a scaling parameter. So the one which we use, the one which uh, differs the most, if you are trying to calculate DB1 as a DA1, the, uh, the, the parameter that will matter the most is the molecular weight. So it's molecular weight versus molecular weight. So we will scale it. So we know that the diffusion coefficient is inversely proportional to the molecular weight. So we are doing DA, DBA by molecular weight, but it is not as simple this thing. So there is a, there will be some factor there. Depending on whether it is water or air, it changes. The, 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 this functionality N becomes 0 0.5, 0 0.6, depending on where we are. So you can use this kind of scaling. So if you know the DA of one compound, say for benzene I know and I do not know for uh, trichlorobenzene or something. So I can calculate that based on molecular weight. This of course uh, neglects other, you know, there are, th there may be electrostatic drag uh, forces, all that, but for to know all that I think you need to know enough about the system to calculate that. But this gives you an estimate, rough estimate. So those are those are additional terms that may add on to when people calculate uh, these kind of things. Okay. So very simply, diffusion uh, to estimate this diffusion, one can do this.
Now uh, one of our main interests focal points we will come back to diffusion in the soil system later before that we will do something else we will complete our uh, discussion. So let us say we are interested there is a pollutant let us say it is uh, sediment easy system for us to understand and there is a sediment there is a concentration there is a region where this is contaminated and now this is uh, in reference to our box model there is a river and so there is a height of, uh, of the water and there will be also a width of the water and this is there is a certain length the way the contamination is happening has happened. Now if I am interested this is, this is concentration of water of A and there is A here this chemical that is sitting here is the pollutant A that we are interested in one of the things we are interested in is what is the contribution of this contamination sediment contamination to water quality so is there a change in the concentration of A entering this zone and exiting this zone. Yeah. Typically if you do a box model what we are doing is um, we will assume this entire thing to be one mixed well mixed volume and then uh, there will be a concentration rho A2 which is the same as this. If this contamination is very long we will do what is called as a plug flow model where we will take series of boxes okay. That is a little more complicated in this scenario so we, we will explain that little bit but we will not deal with it in a large sense so this, this is sufficient for the scope of this particular course. So here we are we need to know in the box model we need to know what is the rate of A from A dissolution or transfer from sediment this becomes a term in the mass balance in the balance. So we are in the overall mass balance we will write this uh, velocity flow rate that is coming in is Q into rho A to 0 which is the rate of in minus rate out we will say rate in equals rate out there is no accumulation let us assume there is no accumulation in this term steady state at steady state The rate of accumulation which we are saying is 0 for yeah. So in this case this is the equation that we write mass balance equations for this box assuming these are the three things happening what is coming in come something is going out and something is being transferred from the sediment. So here we are we say that uh, Q of rho A2 is rho A2 here is is a greater rho A2 is expected to be greater than rho A1 so rho A2 equals rho A2 0 plus mass transfer from sediments. So what is going in? And this is what is coming out equals what is going in plus what is coming in into in from. So this is what is going out and this is what is coming. So this this equals this plus this that is what we have written here in this format. So, but you can get what is the general suggestion is you write the full equation cancel out terms that are not applicable. So steady state unsteady state all that <coughs> and this comes. Now we know these terms these terms what is this term? This term rate of mass transfer from the sediments you have to now calculate what is the rate at the interface this is now we are getting into interfacial rate. So this is, is the uh, 
interface between sediment and the water okay. Same kind of thing can happen with the, the same system I can apply to a river and air I can take a small section of air or a small section of river and I say what is going out of the river or what is coming into the river and what is going in and going out. So, in this case I am looking at rate of transfer across the air water interface here I am looking at rate of transfer across sediment and water. You have a third system we are looking at the same kind of system we are looking at soil and air we are looking at the rate of transfer across the soil air interface all of these three things are there. <coughs> so, we look at the interface transfer so this has to be the, we are saying rate of transfer so it has to be some uh, combination of a velocity and a concentration. So, first before we do that so the rate usually we will explain as flux into area yeah. Now we already <coughs> defined this flux N A equals V into rho A plus uh, N A I equals V into rho A I plus J A I we have already defined this this is the flux but this is this direction of the flux we are talking about here is <coughs> in transfers to the direction of the fluid. So we have this is the sediment and this is the water. What we discussed in all the some of the cases there is, is flow of chemical in the along the direction of the water flow and all but we are now interested in this direction this direction. So, you analyze what is happening to the chemical from this point to this point okay. Yeah. So, is there this or this this is the next question that we ask is can we apply this equation how do we apply this equation to this system okay. Is there diffusion is there is there some amount of convection what is there okay. So, to help you analyze this let us say that this this water is completely static it is not moving at all what do you expect will be the uh, the uh, mechanism diffusion only diffusion if there is a little bit of water movement there this term keeps adding on okay. So, depending on the amount of so if I if I then say flux so, you are looking at uh, now this is a bit tricky so please if those of you who have not seen this before. Um, so, we are write, we are writing this in terms of rho rho a i divided by uh, d x by d in terms of driving force by resistance we are saying that this resistance we are only considering diffusion here it is fixed law but if I generalize this I say driving force by resistance need not be only need not be just diffusion could be anything. If 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 I add the velocity part if I add the uh, this also what happens to the resistance so resistance is higher or lower so very simply any flux is higher if resistance is low yeah in the case of uh, where you have some amount of convection the flux is higher there is mass transfer is higher the diffusion is obviously slower and if I add convection it is going to keep on increasing the flux. So, if my flux is higher as resistance is lower which means that if I have convection versus diffusion this resistance decreases my resistance keeps on decreasing okay which means this term there is another term instead of d i I can add another term which which increases the diffusion coefficient the term increases it relates to lower diffusion lower uh, resistance the higher d a i is higher n a is higher yeah resistance is lower. So, in this example what we are saying is that 
if we add convection the resistance goes down goes down so the point is there is a the next question that comes up why we are asking this question is how much is the resistance here in this zone that depends on this to answer this question we need to, because we have related now resistance to the scale of convection there is no convection the resistance is very high because it is only diffusion. So, the amount of resistance that is there in this case depends on how much convection is there in this region and this relates to the amount of convection in the water relates to how to the hydrodynamics of water itself the flow of water alone ok. So, we have to now go back to what we did uh, in the atmospheric thing also. So, looking at the surface itself ok at the surface we know that there is a velocity profile and if you notice this velocity profile the way it is usually drawn right here it is very close to 0. So, the assumption is as we had discussed earlier that there is friction at the surface and theoretically the water is static at that point. The way we are talking about this is energy is lost into the because of the friction energy is pulled into the uh, solid and somewhere far away from the solid the, there is no influence of this surface solid surface here there is no change in velocity they are all the same the profile is almost the same ok. So, but there is a region below which there is some uh, certain amount of this things. Why is the velocity same here? Because the general assumption is that it is all mixed there is no gradient which means it is all mixed that is the assumption there may be a gradient uh, which we are not able to measure. But in general this we assume that this region is all well mixed. So, this region it could be very low velocity here slightly increased slightly higher velocity and so on. So, there is there are layers of fluid flow and therefore, chemical has to move from one to the other to the other. So, it is very likely that if you have a gradient like this and if you do not have a gradient if you have full total velocity where there is higher velocity you are expecting to see higher. So, one nature of fluid motion if you have a velocity here it will also induce some amount of as you increase the velocity you see there is another concept that uh, has to be introduced that is observed is the nature of the fluid itself. The fluid flow is very slow it is seen to be moving in a relatively straight simple fashion lay fashion, but you have layers. But according to the profile each layer is moving at a different velocity, but they are moving as a separate layer one over the top of the other this is velocity 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is higher velocity, lower velocity, slower velocity and so on, but it is moving like this moving in layers. This is called as laminar flow and it is observed physically you can there are experiments which people have done they can see the fluid moves like that. If you put a tracer in it it will move nicely it is not a straight line, but uh, it is almost a straight line as compared to if I keep increasing if I increase the velocity the velocity goes up I can the fluid start behaving like this it has local uh, fluctuations like this. So, what, what happens here is from here to this point there is no convection it has to diffuse fluid has to diffuse from one layer to the other layer to the other layer and there may be a little bit of convection near the interface. So, that will increase it as you increase velocity the convection scale of convection increases and therefore, you have a higher chance of transferring from this to this to this to this so on. And when it reaches this layer it is well mixed it mixes with the rest of it. So, what this is translated to is that there is a region small region next to the surface where the resistance there is a resistance to mass transfer this is translated according to this okay. the resistance is defined based on what we had discussed here. And this resistance to mass transfer depends on this the structure of fluid here. So, it is linked to the velocity profile and the velocity itself 
the velocity profile is a function of velocity, so it is linked to the velocity itself. We will just stop with this. So, the resistance to mass transfer is based on this. So, here we now have to define a quantity uh, that will link the flux to the concentration variant. We will define what the concentration driving force is and what the resistance is. We will do it tomorrow. Thank you.